Hi folks, um, this section of the video I just want to um, talk in a bit more detail about the Koi Control app. I mentioned it on another video of mine previously but now I've been using it, I've been uploading my data and I just want to tell you all about it. Um, the brilliant thing for me obviously is it's available for your phone. I've always got my phone with me so the whole point of this is when I'm doing my water test I'll put it straight into the phone, don't forget them. Um, sometimes it's easier to do it on the um, iPad so obviously the iPad's a little bit bigger we can do that um, but at the weekend absolutely brilliant uh, the, the guys at Koi Control actually as you can see from the PC have now released a PC version so I'll put the link and everything uh, on here but what I'd like to do now is just sort of take 10 minutes and walk you through and show you um, how I'm using it with my um, information loaded so I'll catch you in a sec so I've just set the camera up um, looking at my iPad, it's probably the easiest way to view it but obviously the uh, the version you get on the phone and on the um, PC is exactly the same, everything's just a lot bigger so you can, uh, you know, when you're getting on a bit like me with poor eyesight it's, uh, it's good to look at things big sometimes. So when you first go into um, Coil Control you're, you've got the, the main overview here which you can choose any one of these um, sort of options from. If we just pop into My Koi first, so I've, um, I've spent some time and I've been updating my koi. Um, so some of the data in here isn't correct and I've guessed at lengths and sort of things like that. But as I uh, as I get them out and start doing things with them, um, you know, it it can uh, it'll start to make more sense and it'll become more, more realistic for me. But basically I've got most of my fish on there and uh, as you can see when you actually go into it, you get like a little summary and a picture of your fish. So if we just um pick on anyone let's pick on Lancelot because he's uh, he's probably the most famous so you've got the koi details you've got his age his length uh, and his approximate weight there's a growth history here which obviously I haven't used at the minute so all it's got is the first record in there but when you get them out um, and you know at a later date measure them you can put new photographs in there you can put the lengths in there to estimate a, a sort of uh, weight um, and obviously what that does is it um, helps you to build up a graph so you can actually see the graph of your koi's growth. Um, the information on here is, is basic things about it. If I just click on the actual thing, that, those are the entries when you want to make an entry about a koi. Obviously you can put whatever photo you want on there. Um, I haven't got a particularly good one of uh, Lancelot at the minute. But sex male is in the main pond. The breeder is Marisai. Um, his name is Lancelot obviously, he's four years old, is a Chagoy, that's the date he went into the pond. Um, the purchase price is not the purchase price, it's just a number um, just to show you that it actually works. And what's interesting on here, if you want, if you don't have the record of your koi, you can just delete it. Or if your koi dies, God forbid, um, you can click the deceased koi button or koi deceased button. Uh, it keeps all the information but obviously it um, <laughs> tells you the koi is dead. So let me just come out of there. Um, there's there's information and things on there as well. So if you want to add notes and things onto your koi, you can again you can put uh, put images on there. You can put some notes on there. Um, the only ones of mine at the minute are who I bought it from. Um, this was the, the chago I bought with the Dnhe uh, Kahaku from a friend. So there we are, back up there. As I say, you you know you, it's great. You can look at all your fish um, at a glance. And if you want to go into a bit more detail, as I say, with the weights and things like that. Uh, knock yourself out it's really really great I must do that as a, as a next step when I start getting them out so if we go back you've got all the options again you can keep clicking on overview if you want to get back to the that first screen but the options down the left are very good uh, my pond which no doubt you've all seen this this is my uh, little piece of koi heaven so that's what it looked like a couple of weeks ago when I did a video on it and um, flowers are growing there so it's looking even better but there you go that, that's my pond uh, and again, if you if, when you enter in your details in, it's very easy to do. We've got 16 fish in there. The volume's 13,500, depth 1.53. Uh, the pumping capacity is 30,000 litres an hour. Obviously, I'm not running at that. It's, they've got varied pumps on. How many drains, how many skimmers, 
uh, you know, if you want to add information, there's a different uh, photo looking at a different way. You can just keep adding tons and tons and tons of information about your pond. Um, and if you want to add another pond, so I'll probably end up uh, putting my like growing tank on there or something like that. So if you've got uh, two or three ponds, if you've got quarantine ponds, grow on ponds, a main pond, a secondary pond, you can put all the information in here and it's all at the touch of, a, you know, available at the touch of a button. It's fantastic. Um, the main one that I uh, love this for is the water parameters. So if I just click on that. So as I've said before, um, I bit OTT when it comes to numbers. What I used to do with my water parameters is I've got a big book and I used to religiously record them all in a book, which was great, you know, really useful. Um, but sometimes I'd lose the book. Sometimes I'd forget what page it was on. Sometimes I'd forget to you know to write it down properly and i'd have to go scratching around for it i tried to um do a bit like cat from cat and i so cat um did herself some graphs and things on the pc um i did all that set it all up i used it a few times it's absolutely great uh i'm just not disciplined enough to keep adding the information in so this as i say because you've got your phone with you all the while you can literally just go in and, and, and add some numbers so if, if we just pretend we're, we're outside doing our testing which you uh, you will see in mine um you're just presented with this screen basically again you can choose this is the main pond i've only got one pond but you can then just put your nitrite for example just put your nitrite nitrite levels in there um and all the other levels you've got in there, nitrite, nitrate, phosphate, ammonium, hardness, salt, put the outdoor temperature in there, um, oxygen levels, temperature in your pond, pH values, KH, uh, carbon, um, so carbon dioxide. Uh, and if you want to keep a, a record of the amount fed, that's great. And any notes as well, it gives you the option to keep them down here. Um, and what's really interesting is if you, um, let's pick on ammonium. So if you put a number in there, so something like 0 0.05 parts per million, you'll see it's in green because um, you're in, you're in, you know, you're in an acceptable range, you're in a decent range for that parameter. But if you put something in like 0. Uh, what, am I, what am I doing? 0 0.11, you'll see it's um, it goes orange. And obviously, if you put something in really high, um, let's put one in you go red because um, basically you're at risk of killing your fish so it gives you like a traffic light system of um, how to do things sorry of, of what you're recording what you're sorry I'll get my words out of what your parameters actually are whether they're in a safe zone whether you need to be a bit wary of them or whether they're downright dangerous um, and it is only an indication so you know everybody makes their own mind up of what they're doing when they do it and what's right for their pond but it's, it's just a good in indicator for me so you'll see this is the um my test from this morning um so 22nd 1150 nitrite 0.033 nitrite i forgot to put it to put it in but it is uh point it's actually less than that but i can't really uh so you put your number in basically and save it and there you go if i go back to that today's sheet uh nitrate 0.25 phosphates about measure ammonium 036 hardness 290 which is something like about eight and a half kh uh, i've got no salt in there outside when i was doing the test was 22 degrees uh temperature in the ponds 18 ph value 7.8 carbon hardness uh, sorry carbon hardness is 158 which is about um 8.5 kh um yeah i don't record what i'm feeding at the moment but that probably will in the future but you can see them all here which is absolutely fantastic um but the, the real brilliant feature for me is when you go into the statistics everything you put into here so nitrate nitrate uh, sorry nitrite nitrate ammonium you can actually pull up on a graph um, because if you're anything like me, you, you, you're not particularly striving for absolute perfection in terms of the reading. What you are, or what I'm striving for, is a very consistent level, um, you know, environment for the fish to live in. So let's just click on the first one. That's nitrite. Uh, it looks a bit dramatic on the graph, but obviously you've got to you've got to sort of um, you know look at what the the scale is. So that's point uh, point zero two to 0 0.036 at the highest which is you know extremely low you can do that for each one of these separately or even better you can overlay them so there's my nitrite 
and my nitrate overlaid and this is where you start to build up your picture of how consistent your readings are if i put ammonium on there as well you see the ammonium at the bottom so it gives you a, a you know it gives you that consistent picture or hopefully it'll give you that consistent picture that you're looking for um, you can do it with all of them as i say i don't measure phosphate or um, oxygen it doesn't overlay the site all the information on everything because of the scale so you can you can choose on other things so ph for example again if you look at it on its own you think oh my god you know real swings of ph there but if you look it's only um changing from 0.78 uh up to eight so it's it's quite um sorry 7.8 up to eight so it's quite um limited swings if i put the kh on there as well if I put the GH on there as well, again, you can start to see that the GH and the KH are really consistent. Um, and again, if I, I can start logging, logging temperatures and things like that. So that's the temperature of the pond. Obviously, I'm heated, so it should be um, at a constant temperature. But you can put the outdoor temperature, oops, put the outdoor temperature on there as well. That does fluctuate quite a lot. So the thing for me is, um, yeah, I'm a bit of a numbers geek. Don't mind admitting it, but this this graph you know how you can see the consistency in what you're doing you can identify that there's a bit of a spike there and i know it's nothing in real terms um but you know that's really good for me so i can uh, i can keep an eye on the pond so yeah brilliant absolutely brilliant i'm loving it at the minute let's just go back uh what else have we got i mean there's there's, there's news things that come out uh, relating to the app obviously um so there's discounts and various things again this is why we're doing this today the pc version's out so if you go to app.coycontrol.com you're on the pc version which is brilliant there's some sort of sorry there's other sorts of discounts and giveaways and things like that um so oh that's my previous video there so that's uh, that's when i first did, started using it very naive and a bit clumsy but there you go um so let's go back um you can put reminders in here as well which i find really useful so i've only got a couple in here at the minute um so i need to check i um, thought about it in the week i need to check um how many uv bulbs i've got in stock for the filter house um and i also wanted to check the um waste in the drum filter um again just to make sure there's no build up in there so uh i've actually done that I'll change that afterwards what else have we got uh, we've got recommendations again it's all it's all koi related things um i've got that electronic salt meter it's very good even though i don't use salt in the pond it's just for uh, salt baths and things like that so again lots and lots of recommendations and information this this will just get uh, you know better as, as the app grows i mentioned before about the salt calculator so you can put your details of your pond in you can put your salt readings in you can put your desired concentration in it'll tell you how much extra salt to put in without you having to uh, to work it all out which is really good as i say i keep going back to this overview but the one on the side is exactly the same um and the food calculator as well so the food calculator um you can have you've got three options of desired growth low medium and high and you've got your water temperatures so if you're not really looking to grow and you're in an outside pond at the minute that's probably going to be your um, matrix, as it were. So your 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 low growth, thirty to sixteen degrees, and it's saying uh, you know feed about fifty one grams a day. If you're looking for really high growth and you've got a heated pool and it's whapped up to about twenty five degrees uh, C, something like that, then it's recommending up to um, two hundred and four grams. So I'm not looking to um, grow any monsters. I just want to create a nice, you know, sort of uh, consistent environment and just keep them happy and watch them develop. So I'm on a medium growth at the moment. Uh, I'm on 18 degrees. So I'm feeding roughly about 122 grams per day. So um, on my overview. So there you go. Um, and then obviously there's details in here, which is well worth uh, a read. Um, those are the guys that um, put it together again great stuff you know i'm finding it i'm sort of going through this and finding different benefits every day but even if it's just to keep your record of your koi in your pond and, and you know you want to put your water parameters in here i would absolutely recommend it i think it's a, it's a cracking app it's the best one i've come across um, and i'll continue to use it and obviously as as i start doing more and more with it um, you know, I will um, I'll record some more videos and get them out to you. But yeah, if you haven't tried it, if you haven't seen it, 
I'll leave all the links and everything down here. So uh, definitely go and have a look. It's uh, it's well worth it. Okay, so hopefully that's uh, that's helped you out if you're uh, looking for something like this to record all your bits and pieces on. Thank you very much. Catch you on the next one.